So these are the original tire inflation systems available for dirt bikes. The uh, inner tube, of course, that's that's the standard. That's still what all dirt bikes come with from the factory. Uh, this is a bib mousse. So it completely replaces the air. It's just a big hunk of foam inside the tire and you don't inflate it with air at all. And finally, um, this guy is a tubeless conversion. So it, it has a little inner tube on the inside. You blow that up at a real high pressure and it expands and then forces the tire beads against the rim flange and that will create a seal there. So it, you can convert an inner tube type tire to tubeless. And you know, each one of these systems has some really nice features about it, but they tend to also have uh, at least one significant drawback, you know. So for example, with uh, the tubeless, it gives the top of the tread a really nice supple feel and you can run lower pressure without getting a flat, um, but it takes away a lot of the lateral stability from the tire. And if you're trying to run low pressure uh, with nothing inside the tire, no structure to support it laterally, you get a lot of tire roll and squirm and you just can't corner very hard on it. So ultimately what I found out is that um, I wasn't able to really reduce the pressure beyond what I could run with an inner tube. Some of our first prototypes here, uh, we were basically you know, taking the bib mousse idea and trying to combine it with uh, the, the tubeless design. So we have this chunk of foam down near the base of the tire that uh, helps protect you from big impacts and adds to the stability lower in the tire. Uh, that foam also can dissipate the energy from impacts much better than air alone. So we get this kind of springy, resilient top with uh, a damped and more supportive bottom of the tire, inner part of the tire. Uh, these earliest prototypes, like this one, um, just were cut out of a big block of foam with a hot knife and then glued together in a ring. And it, it was just a way that we could try a bunch of different shapes quickly, you know, so we could kind of zero in on the profile that we wanted. Uh, this prototype was uh, our first molded prototype, but it's a completely different material than what we ended up using. So this prototype used this deep channel in the center here, uh, partly to reduce weight, but also because we thought we would need more flexibility on the tire sidewalls. So we, we thought that it would uh, make the sidewalls too stiff. But over time, what we found out is uh, we could use a lower density, lighter material and uh, fill in this cavity to, to get more support on the sidewalls. So what we eventually ended up with is a shape like this, that it's actually wider than the tire and that top portion is mostly filled in there. And uh, we found that you know, this maximizes the, the damping and stability of the lower portion of the tire casing there, but um, isolates the top part of the tire so it can be springy and resilient and really spread out and give you the best traction. All right, so looking at the, uh, the bib mousse and the Kushkor prototype here side by side, um, you can see there's some similarities, right? With, it's as if we cut this bib mousse in half and just use the portion that's only next to the rim. Uh, the, the mousse is good at its ability to absorb and dissipate shock, so it, it does a better job absorbing energy than air by itself. Um, but having the foam up right underneath the contact patch here actually really kind of ruins the ride feel. It gives it sort of a dead feel and uh, the bike doesn't have as much traction. So ideally what we want is something that is air inflated up on the top, more like a tubeless tire, but uh, has the performance of the bib mousse down in the bottom half of the tire. So uh, we're really kind of getting the best performance aspects out of the bib mousse and combining that with the best performance aspects of uh, a tubeless tire.